I'm finding myself chatty today, and I really think this needs to be the last one for a while, and <laughs> there's a very specific reason. And while I'm not going to get into that one, I do want to say that I'm going to a quick review of what I just said going to and coming from the store. I found a capacity that I don't like in myself again and thought I should recognize it while it's fresh because one of the things that's challenging is trying to get from A to B where A is a thought that means something to me and B is sharing it with anybody that uh, for any reason is listening. And, uh, and I'm not one to carry around a little notebook, though I may give that a shot and jot a couple things down because I've truly lost some things that I know I really wanted to review. Um, and they'll come back to me at some point. That's one of the reasons I'm taking a year to do this. I figure over the course of a year, everything that I've forgotten, I'll remember to speak about at some point. And <laughs> I have not forgotten what I got on to speak about right now, which is that I'm often one to serve up a slight negative on a composite, way positive person, like I did with Charlie. And it's not fair to say something like, uh, he can be a little uh, overbearing in his training, or he, can, uh, he has a condescending presence. You know what, he, he's 22, and he knows more than me, and he tells me in a way that doesn't hide that. I don't really give a fuck that that's how he acts. Because at that age, knowing more than somebody and showing it is not offensive at all. And it's really not even offensive to me now. But I take umbrage at the idea that I get told things I'm about to do before I do them. And I shouldn't. I shouldn't because, A, number one, he's, he's clearly smart. And, and is on top of most of his stuff. And also has a really inward um, pointed uh, intellect that I think will serve him tremendously. And I tell him all the time that I have no fear that his life's going to work out for the positive. I can see nothing but ways that it will go right. And I didn't used to look at anybody like that, including myself, but especially myself. But I, I mean, that wasn't a feeling I had about other people. I would look at them, uh, I don't even know what, I guess sizing them up for some sort of um, sparring that may be in our future. I, I don't know. There just there was an insincerity to my approach to the world. And it was all my doing. I was, I, I was incapable of knowing how to be real for people to respond to me as who they really are. And now that some of the people I'm getting to know are showing me who they really are. I'm really excited that the world has these people in it because I think they have the kind of trajectory potential that is limitless. And there's another movie I like. And gets the drug experience of crystal meth as close as anything. At least <laughs> maybe all the way through when you take it thematically. But that, that sort of effect that he has at the beginning, that clarity, I know that whoever wrote that is describing crystal meth, believe me. <clears throat> Anyhow, again, never use crystal meth. There are certain drugs that I think are gateways to our own weaknesses. And that's one of them. I'm sure heroin's one of them too. I've never taken it. Never will. Don't need to know that I can't control myself in the face of heroin. I'm pretty sure I already know that. And I don't even need to put pretty sure in that sense. Don't know why I did. I'm sure I know that. I'm an addictive motherfucker. And that's one of substances that makes the weak feel the most released from pain, something I don't even really want anymore. And so I'm not worried about chasing it down. And if I saw heroin on a table, I'd be curious to see it, but I'd feel no threat by its presence that it could find its way into my life. It never will. It can't because that's not who I am anymore. But I did... <laughs> find um and again it's weird how you just nothing nothing you're expecting at all and then casual drop of conversation and boom all of a sudden i have what i think is a conduit to the uh the uh hallucinogenic that we call magic mushrooms and 
uh, I also know that I have a conduit to LSD. And these two are two different paths in my current social structure that came, one of them came at me completely randomly. The other one came at me as a mentioning conversation, a drop of just going over stuff in our history and bam, boom. So, ha, <clears throat> ha. <laughs> universe that doesn't give this kind of stuff to me ever is giving it to me on in double barreled shotgun form so i can't overindulge here but i can't tell you how much i really want to take lsd in a capacity to turn myself inwardly oh to 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 take what it does to perception and turn it on to what i'm starting to perceive as the real me for the very first time I want to see how exposed to the universe that level of consciousness creates. That's the experiment. That's why I want to do it by myself. That's why I have no, um, I have no desire to do this in any other capacity. In fact, Sam Harris speaks of going through an experience, and I believe it was DMT. I don't know. Of, of I believe uh, doing it blindfolded, which is awesome. I think that's just. That's more than I think I can do, just having not done it for, boy, 25 years. I don't even know the last time I did it. But it's been a while. And uh, I wonder when the last time I did do it was. Nobody cares. And <clears throat> it's always been the first thing that made me see magic in a universe full of causal reality. Because it tapped into a side of experience that I didn't know could, could exist. Nobody does until you've been through it. And yet the whole time I, I was a user, which was a good decade of experience, including one time that I went to a Grateful Dead concert and took 25 hits of acid. That was crazy. But in all my ways that I was willing to push myself, in all the things that I was willing to do to try to chase down God or the meaning of life or whatever, the real me, something on which to latch this seemingly unjust, unfair, unstructured experience called human life. And then all of a sudden, you walk through the stupid wardrobe into Narnia and think, wait, but what if, right? Oh my God, I'm having this. I don't know if I've talked about this either, but <clears throat> there are times when I start having an idea or I start working through something that my body just starts feeling electric. It just, it has a, it is very pleasurable. I don't want to say it's like orgasmic, but it, it's on the verge. It's that kind of body uh, heightened sensitivity that is mental. And I, I swear, if I'm woo-woo about anything right now, it's this. That sometimes I think when you tap into an idea that's true, that is universally true. In other words, if you say something like, um, I believe the universe is kind and forgiving, and this is the kind of statement that might cause this vibrational slash skin. It's all over the body though. It's almost like your blood gets electric and starts feeling like it's flowing with electricity. Whatever it is, it happens when I think through or, or converse in a capacity that an idea is resonating. And um, just now, uh, I had a serious uh, interaction of that nature. And I do have these sometimes multiple times a day, so this isn't uncommon at all. And I'm sure it's just the air current flowing through my creaky old house. I get it. But I do feel like wisdom is there to be accessed not through chasing up a mountain of complexity but by walking around it 
with the ease of stepping onto a boat that floats on a moat that goes straight to the destination. Sometimes I really think that's all it is. And that's what these vibrational um, harmonics sometimes feel like. I, and I'm, I'm full of shit. I know I am. So don't listen to it. But if you are ever sensing that your intuition is guiding you in a positive way, I do know that that creates more belief in what you're capable of achieving. Because so much of what we are done in by is telling ourselves that this is all we deserve. That we've really hit a cap that in some ways we're lucky that they're not pulling back some of the stuff we have got. Because that is the messaging that <laughs> we're getting at the highest level. Is that not only are we unworthy, but we're overserved, Which is horseshit. <clears throat> in fact, it's the kind of distraction nonsense that pulls you away from living a life that lets you just be happy regardless of what they're going to do. Who gives a damn? They can't influence your position of divinity. There's no, <laughs> there's no external uh, energy, force, or entity that can come into your space and remove the divinity of your experience as a human being because it's completely yours to own. It cannot be taken, stolen, or in any way contaminated from outside. So all the nonsense, all the peripheral yuckety yuck, I don't know, is it just static in the system that needs to be discharged so that we can get back to running efficiently, cooperatively, and in harmony at the highest possible level? Or is it the creation of intentional disruption to keep us from realizing the congruent elevation or potential of achieving as a, as a collective. I don't know. Because the collective is the consciousness that keeps coming back to mean anything at all. In other words, if I don't think that I'm part of the greater scene, I'm missing the simplest part of the small and big picture. Nothing I do is not without uh, a cross-reference across everything, time, space, and reality that is happening to all of us right now. And I know that's trippy head bullshit and uh, sounds like a stoner got too much fucking weed. And I, I need to work on going back into some of these recordings, realizing what I've said, and then coming up with the supportive uh, both evidence and argument that allows that to become... Um, counter-attackable. I don't look for, th this is not prescriptive. This is not me knowing how to get something done that'll mean something for you. This is me working out meaning in my life for the first time that is coming from, it's swelling from within. And these are, these are the kinds of dissociations that I thought I was born never to experience because I heard other people talk about some of these, um, I don't know, connections with themselves that I was just never, I was never tuned into. And whether it was from failure, failure to realize or failure to um, have been composed correctly or just failure as a guy that was a kind of douchebag, I, ne I never expected to somehow, I don't know. Find peace, happiness, and true joy of being alive. I'm not saying I really ever thought I could kill myself, but if you don't think I thought of killing myself, oh my God. Hello God, welcome to the conversation. I thought of killing myself a lot because I couldn't find meaning in life to justify enduring what in many aspects was self-induced pain. But in other aspects, wasn't. It was external influence doing its thing or a uh, misread circumstance that I allowed to blossom into something uh, not even relevant, but terribly influential in a corrosive way. Or not having the balls to tell somebody I didn't love them who told them they loved me. You know, stupid shit. And 
but I could allow myself to get away with at the time whatever cooperative delusional states of well maybe and then like this and, you know, there's always blank and what if I win the lottery you know if you can if you can work the sort of decisions you're making now into a schema that those are the kinds of outcomes that are going to be at some point necessitated to make it all work out then I think you've picked the wrong schema <clears throat> and I, I speak this especially to the people who believe that they can always whip out a long shot at the end because they're really good at doing that in most circumstances because I'm one of those people and I can put something off, put something off, put something off, put something off, put something off that everybody else is working on for three weeks and then in three hours time come up with something that's really good because what I'm not doing is really putting that thing off it's in my head I'm constantly evaluating how I'm going to get that thing done I'm, I'm really creating editions 1 through 94 mentally so that when the moment comes to actually put something down, this is as good as I've got. I'm not, I'm not winning the moment by having all of a sudden manifested something sensational in three hours. I put three week, weeks worth of time into it. I just do my, my information gathering and whiteboarding differently than most. That's what's really going on. So if you think that you've got this capacity in which you can snap it all together at the end, you really don't. You have an ability to be truly uh, multitasking at a time when most people are focused and directed. And that isn't going to serve you well when the point of the whole game is to have incrementally improved to the point that there isn't any need to multitask. You've completed the tasks necessary. You have ascended to the position of acceptance of yourself to the point that there's no reason to filter out the nonsense anymore. It's already done. And since you won't live in a capacity to be nonsensical, nonsensible, or nonsense inducing, or even nonsense producing, although, let's face it, I produce some nonsense. <laughs> if you're going to give yourself enough of a break that your <clears throat> poor decisions previously are now the kinds of decisions that you will no longer make, then accountability is what you're drilling into your life. And like I said, I know that I let the universe go. I let it become unaccountable. Because I myself was a piece of shit who wasn't very accountable. And when I did get caught, I lied about it. And then I told people that they were wrong when they caught me in those lies. And then I would gaslight them until they would say, fuck you, you're a dick, and leave my life. I know singing that in a sort of sing-songy way isn't cool because that's real pain that's putting shit down that doesn't go away that's treating people with the kind of disdain that makes them think people suck <laughs> you know what that's shitty to make people think people suck is shitty that is one thing that is always shitty i don't care what planet you're on i don't care what movie you're starring in i don't care what goddamn position of office you've attained it ain't cool to do ever and so that's an easy lesson learned because you know what if you treat people that way stopping to treating them that way gets you a better universe immediately and if all y'all who do this chaotic crap stopped it in one fell swoop and just started acting differently and nice and kind and forgiving to the universe well that's one universe I wouldn't even think about killing myself in because that's a universe where we're all putting our best foot as far forward as possible expecting only to learn to stretch further the next time and when we can't get anything but a slippery slope on which we think we're gonna fall there's three people ready to catch us that's the universe I want to live in so that's the universe I got to train myself to to welcome and the universe that is that universe is not a universe in which i give us a shit <laughs> god i love the letter z too z is such a z is 
oh god c is such the coolest letter it's not even close i mean x has a little bit of an argument and q just for its own quirkiness and quiet yet quintessential and quixotic quippiness questioning quit right um the the way in which i am an easy mark is starting to be a good way for me to think stop being so susceptible right stop being so susceptible forgive that manager who's clearly over her head that's number one when i say we ask people to do stupid shit, one of them is we ask them to do too much we stretch them to the point that okay let's assume you are a perfect employee with perfect skills who had been perfectly trained to be perfectly available to us in all perfect capacities that you are a perfect cog in the perfect machine that is this machine making as much possible money so that we can extract as much value from the universe as possible what if you were that person this is how you would work this is what your efficiency metrics would look like and this is the level of work you would produce now you are this person who is quintessentially not that person but close enough that we've hired you to do this job and here are all the ways in which you are not that person here are all the ways you're deficient here are all the ways you don't stack up here are all the ways that if you were perfect we would call you an a-plus employee but instead we call you somebody who has room for improvement? Well, yeah. You know, how long are you gonna take that chunk of our self-esteem away from us, corporate America? How long is the universe gonna tell us to stop thinking that we do a good job and start looking at all the ways that we could be more efficient, <clears throat> more timely, more effective, more... Mm, what'd they call it at Home Depot? Oh, when you created shareholder value, that was like when they all sat in the back and creamed their pants. And it, <clears throat> it's such a pursuit of nonsense. I mean, there's nothing of meaning there. What did I do? I created shareholder value? Sweet. Do you know the answer to 6C here? It's a four-letter word that means don't give a shit. give a shit i do give a shit that i just coughed in everybody's face look sorry but was i really gonna make it through all this without a bong yet probably not so i don't hold myself to be uh better than i'm capable of but i do hold myself to be better yep there needs to be less coughing in people's faces in these recordings there needs to be more consistency in the audio quality and there needs to be less disruption of uh, a circuitous nature where I can't get back to the point I was making. And I need to stop telling people what the point is because I think you're here to figure it out for yourself. But, having given myself those qualifications, having come to understand today that today is a day that is about remembering that the journey is just always beginning. Never getting closer to the end. You're never crossing bridges that are getting you to a new spot on the terrain. You are always taking the next step, which is the first step of the journey that you're on. Because every step you've already taken is gone. Every journey is a one-step journey that you take a million times. And I finally see that. And I think it's really made me okay with my moments of uh, is that how you want to act? Because I can step into a better me with the very next step. And I keep trying to do that. I believe that if I do that throughout the year, there will be literal marked improvements across my life from having just been willing to step with grace, dignity, and truth into the world is who I really am.
and I'm working on getting better at that every day. And if I'm wrong, well, I don't want to say how great the weed is again, but the weed is great. If I'm wrong, maybe I'll give up weed and see if that was the problem all along. <laughs> but let's face it, I don't expect to be wrong very often. <laughs>